Hi everyone, uh, in this video we are looking at the vector autoregressive model, uh, shortened as uh, the VAR model. Uh, the VAR model is a stochastic process model used to capture the linear interdependency among multiple time series. Uh, it is a multiple equation model that endogenizes all variable series in the model. It's particularly useful for forecasting uh, predicting the behavior or response of one variable to shocks or changes in another variable. Um, now, to estimate VAR model, there are four important steps or stages that you must carefully consider. Okay, uh, the first one, the first step is the, the pre-estimation stage. This will help you to determine the, the appropriate variant of VAR, vector to regressive model, uh, to be adopted uh, okay uh, for vector var model there are different variant okay we have the total yamamoto variant we have the vector error correction mechanism variant we have the var force different each of these are uh, uh, variant has their own condition okay so the uh, uh, pre-estimation test is very very important okay and then you have the estimation that give you the var estimation result Ordinarily, we do not interpret the result, okay, because uh, sometimes it's always too ambiguous, okay. Uh, most cases, we make inferences from the result, and you get that by uh, 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 looking out for your impulse response of various decomposition uh, um, estimates, and then we have the post-estimation test, okay. So, uh, that is that. So, today we'll be looking at uh, the two variant of VAR, VAR itself, and the VAR force difference. Now, for you to use VAR, VAR, unrestricted VAR, okay, all your variable must be stationary at levels, it's very very important, okay, must be stationary at level, VAR, it's a, uh, it's a level series uh, equation uh, model, okay, now here, let's say we are taking GDP growth, as the, that in this other, the audio control button, click on inflation, real interest rate, okay, you right click and then you come and open as, uh, as VAR, okay, now, you have the unrestricted VAR, okay, that's nice, and then uh, you click on OK. Now, you cannot really make any inference on this estimation because you would need to uh, conduct what we call the lag selection criteria. That will help us to determine the optimum lag appropriate for the model. So, uh, you come to view here, okay, you see lag structure, and then you click on lag length criteria. Uh, let's say we would, sorry, it is not supposed to be there. Let's say we will look at... Uh, three lags and then we we'll click on OK. We have various lag selection criteria that we have here from uh, FPE, Akai K, Schwarz, like that, like that. Now most of the selection criteria are considered OK. Most of them here, yeah, apart from uh, Schwarz, consider zero lag and uh, Anna Queen consider zero lag either. Akai K, FPE and other lags, they think uh, one is appropriate. What? You could either choose one or zero depending on the, the justification. Okay, Akai K has its own uh, good attribute and limitation, so you have to justify why you have to go for each of these sel uh, lag selection criteria. So you can now come back to estimate, estimate, and then you change. let's say we are going for one. Okay, lag select uh, la uh, one um, lag length one. Okay, you click on okay. Now you have your result. Okay. Normally, uh, we do not interpret this result, but we can make inferences from them by uh, conducting what we call the impulse response test, and uh, we estimate a various decomposition. So, you could either come here, you see, and click on it to do your impulse response, or you could come to view, okay, this drop down menu, and click on the impulse response. So, you see, the impulse and the responses of each of the variable to each other. Here you have, do you want it to be displayed in a table or in a graph? Mostly, uh, we use t uh, graphs, so let's use a uh, multiple graph. Right? The period you want, 10 periods, okay. Now, this is a yearly data, so it will be like 10 years, within 10 years, okay. So, you click on OK. Now, we have our result, okay. Now, basically, the impulse response uh, tells us uh, the responses of uh, a variable to shocks in another variable, okay. This uh, this is the own shock. How does uh, GDP growth respond to shocks and GDP growth? Okay, this is how inflation responds to how GDP growth responds to shocks and inflation. Okay, uh, by this he said it's, it's respond negatively. Okay, negatively but stable. Okay, but uh, that could only last uh, up to within four and five period. This it come. It, uh, it revert back to equilibrium at this stage. This is telling us that uh, GDP growth is not really 
response to shocks in the interest rate. You see, it is virtually no responsive. This is telling us that interest rate responds negatively to inflation, kind of, but uh, it reverts to equilibrium uh, within three or four years. Yeah. So this is impulse response. Uh, helps it tells us uh, uh, shocks in one, one, how a variable okay responds to shocks in the other variable. Okay. Now another inference we can make from this is to come here and uh, uh, estimate the variance decomposition. Okay. So variance forecast decomposition. You come here, see variance decomposition. You click on it. Do you want it in table or you want it in graph? Okay. It is mostly presented in table. So it's a, it's a choice. Uh, let's say we're still considering 10, 10 year period. Okay. You click on OK. Now, this is the variance decomposition result. The variance decomposition result tells us uh, uh, what percentage, uh, what percentage of changes in the dependent variable uh, are explained by the independent uh, variable. Okay, like this. The decomposition of GDP growth is telling us that in the first year, GDP account for own innovation account for changes in GDP. Okay, all other variables in the model. They do not have. They do not account for any influence in GDP growth. Okay, so that means we have a year lag in year two. The effect of uh, changes in this variable, okay, inflation rate on, on GDP starts in year two. So that means we have a year lag. Okay, and uh, this will mean that we are about uh, 0.31 percent changes in GDP uh, is accounted for by uh, accounted for by inflation year two and real interest rate uh, 0.1 percent changes in GDP is accounted for by our real interest rates downward like that. So uh, that is that. The same thing to inflation. Okay, inflation on shocks. Uh, inflation, interest rate, if the effect, influence of interest rate on inflation is now existing in the first period. So you see it's zero, so that's, there's a year lag. It's starting in the second period, but uh, GDP growth influence on inflation starts in the first year. Okay, this is the on shock. Okay. There's a percentage of changes in inflation as accounted for by inflation, previous year inflation itself. Okay, so uh, that is variance, variance decomposition. This is VAR. I told you for VAR, uh, it needs to be stationary at level. Okay, uh, if you still do not know how to conduct your neutral test, please refer to my first video. Visit uh, Joseph Larry. Joseph Larry, and you will see my first video on the, on how to conduct a neutral test. Okay, let's go to the second uh Variant of VAR that is a VAR force difference. Okay, for VAR force difference, uh, you use VAR force difference when all your variables are non stationary. When I mean non stationary, I mean they are stationary at force difference, I1 variables, and they are not co integrated. By non co integration, I mean they do not have a long run relationship. So you use VAR at force difference. Okay, again, if you don't know how to conduct co integration tests, please refer to my, my first video. Now, how do we do that? Please just Okay, let's let's start let's start from scratch. Let's delete var and then uh, sorry. Okay, now let's say we are going uh in the same order. GDP growth. You hold your control button, click on inflation, interest rate, and then you right click and open as var. Now the assumption is that uh, all series are high one series. They are non stationary series. Okay. They are stationary only at first difference and they are not contiguated. This is the assumption we are going with. Now, so you just come here, the, the difference of the variable. The variables, rather. And the. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Close bracket. I think I deleted T. Okay. Yeah, close the bracket. Okay. Now it should be proper for us to come and conduct the uh, the lag length criteria test here to be done. As well. So you click on OK and then you come here. Come for the, the lag structure. You see lag lag length criteria. Uh let's say we're picking three lag period and then we have it. Uh only in this case only uh Schwarz criteria go for zero lag and a queen, a kai k, they go for one one. So you decide when we have a variation in the lag criteria by different uh, select lag selection criteria, you have to choose, but you have justify why you're going for each of the criteria. So you come back here, let's say we are taking one, one, and then uh, 
you come now by this we have set specify our var at first difference okay so you click on okay this is the result okay we do not interpret result but we can make inference from this result so you come here to get your impulse response uh click on this you have your impulse response so we're still going with graph 10 year period okay okay so you have your impulse response this is var var at first different okay you will realize that for most of the variable they revert back to equilibrium quickly okay if you look at this uh, revert back to equilibrium in the 50 year this is not responsive this the second year is back to equilibrium okay okay so uh this is the this 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 telling us that uh inflation responds negatively to shocks and in interest rate but uh the effect way away at the between the second and third period okay uh yeah okay that is that uh so that is vector uh two regressive model uh the next video will be looking at it to the mama two and the vector error correction mechanism model please do not forget to click on the subscription button okay and the subscribe button below uh and drop a comment if you if you have any thank you okay let me say this i must say that uh var model perform well with uh high frequency data no by high frequency data i mean uh either daily data monthly data quarterly data okay i think yeah the uh, the model uh this was suited for such kind of uh data okay enjoy your watch